right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play this game called Biome Builder. In this game, we are basically ecologists, and we are studying the Sahara Desert, the Pacific Ocean, the American Prairie, and the Amazon Rainforest, okay? This is sort of like a game that I guess was meant to educate you about the web of life in these different biomes, basically. It's kind of the idea of the game, uh, theme-wise. So, on your turn, you're first going to start with a plant card. You get, uh, there's only four different plant cards. There's one plant card for each of the four different colors. Green, blue, yellow, and red. Okay, and here's another plant right here for red, for instance. But you're only going to start with one of these cards, and you don't get to choose. You randomly start with one of the four plants. Okay, and then that, that plant is going to go into your field. So let's say this is my field here. In this game, you're allowed to have two fields at the same time. So I can have a field for the Amazon rainforest over here, and I could have a, a field for the uh, savanna over here, for instance. But you can't be working on, on more than two fields at a time, just one. Okay? So, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to start with five cards in your hand. Okay? Every player starts with five. You get to look at your cards, and you're allowed to take as many actions as you want or are able to take on your turn. Now, what can you do? Well, you can play a card on, into your field. So if I had a one of the numbers above one... For green, I could plant them on this card. I could stack them on the card. But I have none, so I can't do that. Okay? Um, one of the other actions that I could take is I can exchange a card from my hand and exchange it with a card here in the market, for instance. So I can exchange it for one of these cards. So let's say I do that. So let's just say I do that. So let's say I'm going to exchange... Uh, this uh, uh, this sea urchin here for um, uh, this uh, uh, this card here. Okay, so I'm going to exchange it for that. You can do that as many times as you want. Basically, you can exchange cards from your hand as many times as you want with the market. Okay, so let's say I do that. So then let's say I also exchange. Uh, this this blue card here for this card here as well. So I'll do that. And so now I have something I can do. I can actually plant this card here, and it's called Abundance. We'll go over what Abundance means later. But yes, I could plant this card in my second field. And so now I've got a plant out for Savannah. That means I can now play this card here, the Savannah 2 herbivore. And I could also play this ostrich as well, because it's, it's, higher, it's higher as well. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to try to get three cards stacked on top of each other. Um, when you place out your, your second card from the plant, it doesn't have to be a two. The second card could be a three, and that's allowed. As long as it's a two or a three... Um, and there's a way you can break that rule, but as long as it's a two or three, you can place out a card, uh, one of those, one of these two cards only, uh, as the second card, okay? And then you'd want a four or a five uh, as your next card number. But what you're, what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to want to complete a, a set of cards for the most points, okay? So let's just do that. So let's just say I had, a be I had an awesome hand. And I've got this, uh, this one, and this two, and this three here. And then I also have, there's one of those. Let me find one. If I can find one. Ah, uh, here we go. So I could also do something like this. If I had this all in my hand, I could play the four, and I could play the five. Now, the reason why you want all of the numbers one through five perfectly is because... Any, on any time on your turn you, turn, you are allowed to basically bank your cards. Now, banking means is you're going to score your cards at the end of the game. You're going to set them aside, though. So this is, a com this is a completed set here, okay? Another completed set would be 
let me find one. So let's say I had that, and I had this and this as well. And let's just say I didn't have this. I could bank all of these cards now. So let's say this is my equation here. I don't think I'm gonna get that four or five anytime soon, and I have some other plants in my hand, and I want to be able to play them sooner rather than later. I can bank these cards now and get them out of the way, and at the end of the game, I'm gonna score points based on each of their numbers here. So this is six points for these three cards, okay? Um, so that means I could do that same thing with this stack here. I could score all of these, but then since I have one through five exactly, I will also get one of these tokens, which adds an additional 10 points to my score. So you kind of do want to try to get one through five completely to help you uh, get these extra tokens for extra points. That's kind of the idea but you're not always going to be able to do that for sure. And so sometimes you're just gonna be stuck with, with this as the equation, okay? But you, unless, unless there is one card that breaks this rule, again, there's a couple of cards that will break some of these rules, but you're always going to normally, you're always going to have it to have at least three cards in your stack, starting with the lowest as the one slash plant, okay? and two other cards to be able to score them, to be able to bank them on your turn and score them, okay? Uh, you, so if I had only like, for instance, if I only had these two cards, I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally be able to just score them because I have them. I'd have to have at least three cards in a stack in order to score, score the points at the end of the game and get them out of the way so I can place in another field, another plant with another bunch of animals. But yeah, the game is basically sort of trying to teach you the web of life, you know, the, you know, well, you've got, you've got uh, a wild desert gourd, which is a plant, and then uh, you've got an herbivore, which eats plants, so that goes on top, and then you've got an omnivore that probably wouldn't eat, definitely would not eat the gazelle in real life, most likely, unless it was dead or something. But it eats like insects and 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 some plants, right? So omnivore, right? Um, and that would be next in line. And then you've got a predator, which would definitely eat, you know, both of these animals if possible. Maybe not the ostrich, but in real life. But that definitely that to gazelle, right? And then we have the apex predator, which is in real life would be the animal that doesn't have any predators that would eat it. You know, not including human, maybe. But no, not really any animals that would go after it in the wild. So that's why it's the apex predator. So it, would, it wouldn't it would eat a cheetah, most likely. But the cheetah can't eat the golden eagle, most likely, either. Probably it's not going to catch it. It would just fly away anyways, right? That's kind of the idea. So it's trying to teach people the web of life, basically, in each of the different types of habitats uh, that are in this game. That's kind of the idea. Um... Uh, so, so let me teach you some of the other cards. So the the game. So first of all, the game will end when every single card has been drawn from the biome builder deck. That's how the game ends. So the game will won't end until every single card has been drawn from here. Then the game is over. That's the only way the game ends. Unfortunately, that is the only way. And there's some reasons why that's unfortunate, but we'll get to that later. Let me explain how some of the other cards work, though. So that abundance plant, that isn't a normal plant. In, that, in fact, let me show you the difference in plants here. Here's the other uh, a wild desert gourd. It doesn't say abundance on it, does it? Now, let me find the other plant. There's one more that has a different name on it. That's the same plant in here somewhere. Just gotta find it. Here it is, starvation. So there's three different types of cards for each plant, okay? That means there'll be starvation on the plants for the blue ones, and there'll be abundance on the blue ones as well, and all the other two, the other colors, right? So this is a regular plant. So normally, you're going to stack this one as normal, okay? You're gonna try to stack this one normally as possible. Maybe you'll only get these three cards and then and then bank them and score them. Or maybe it'll be something more like this. Or something more like this, maybe, perhaps. But that's the general idea. 
However, with abundance, you can actually have two stacks on this plant because it's an, it's an abundant plant. That's basically the idea. So I could have like, for instance, something like this, you know? Um, and then I can find another three. So let's see if I can find some more of the, for that color, right? Um, we could put that there, for instance. I could have that there and that there. And then I could have something like that. And then when I go to score this, when I go to, go to bank these cards, I can gather all of these cards up for points at the end of the game. So that's something that Abundance allows you to do. It allows you to have two stacks on the same field, okay? However, Starvation is a little different. Starvation means that maybe perhaps there's no prey animals for the predators to eat. And so Starvation allows you to skip Omnivore, and it allows you to skip the Herbivore. And instead, you can place, go right to the four, and then the five, and score that. That's what Starvation does. So it allows you to skip the Prey and the Omnivore, and go straight to Predator and Apex Predator. So it gives you some variations of possibilities for scoring your cards. That's kind of the idea of that. Now I explained how abundance and I explained how uh, starvation works, but there are still four other cards that are unique to this game that have some effects. They're known as effect cards. First we have rain, then we have invasion, then we have scavenge, and then the other one is migration. Okay, these are some cards you might actually end up getting. Okay, so let me explain them. Uh, migration, if you play this, it's basically, basically when you play this, you swap your hands with another player. That's what it does. So if you have five cards, your opponent has five cards, you can swap with them. You could have three cards in your hand, and, you, and your opponent could have five cards, and it's your turn, and you play this. Uh, they get your three cards, and you get their five cards. So that means you can just keep playing cards, if this was in your hand, in a sense, depending on what they had, obviously. Um, but if you, take your, if you take your opponent's cards like that, at the beginning of their turn, if they don't have five cards in their hand at the beginning of their turn, they get to draw up to five cards. So it's not a huge deal if you swap hands, unless you really like what you have in your hand. Um, then obviously, migration, you're going you're to hate it. Um, so that's how migration works. Um, at the end of your turn, if you did end up playing some cards into stacks and, or playing some effect cards, and you only have a couple of cards left, or three, or whatever, you still get to draw up to your hand limit of five at the end of your turn as well. So this way you're always going to have five cards. But that's, that's how migration is going to work. Um, the way scavenge is going to work is that it basically allows you to look at your opponent's hand, and you get to steal a card from them. But you're also exchanging a card with them. So you're taking one of their cards and exchanging it with the cards you have. Okay, so that means you can't play this if you don't have a card to exchange with them. But yeah, that's how scavenge is going to work. Invasion. Let me, ex let me explain invasion, okay, because there is some interesting things about invasion. So let's say my opponent has a card out. They've got that plant out, okay. Um, I could do this. I could put invasion on their card, which is an invasive species that basically blocks them from completing this stack. So now that this is here, they can't put any other cards on this stack, on my opponent's stack. They can't do it. But on their turn, because this is here, they can score this on their next turn and just get the one point for the card, if that was the case. So, I mean, you might not do it when they have just one card there, but you might want to stop them. If, they, you feel like, if you feel like they are potentially going to score this 10-plus bonus points because they've almost got a stack completed from one to five, that will definitely throw a monkey wrench into their plans because now there's no way they can finish it. They can bank it for the points, so that's something, but they won't get to finish it now because you just messed them up. But that's what the effect invasion is going to do. It's a really nasty card for sure. Then we have rain. Okay, so sometimes it's hard to complete a stack. Maybe you've got a plant. Maybe you've got one of these. Maybe you've got this, but then these are the last two cards you have in your hand. 
and you would really like to get that bonus token that gives you 10 points, but there's no way you could do it normally because you would need a four and only have his hero is a five. So what you can do is if you had the rain, the effect rain allows you to basically use it as a wild card for one of your stacks. So now this could be the four that I need, and then this would be five, and now I get to score this because this is a wild card. So that's what rain's gonna do. It's gonna be a wild card for any of the colors that you might need it for to complete a stack to help you get these bonus tokens would be in your best interest to use it for that if you're having a difficult time getting them. That's how rain is gonna work. That's how the effect cards work. These are the only four of them. And that's how you play this game. You basically just see who has the most points at the end of the game and win, and you win. Okay, so now that I've explained how to play the game, let me talk about some of the reasons why, let me talk about this game a little bit in a little detail. So, first of all, let's show you this. So let me see if I can get a better, there we go. You'll notice this game it, on the box, it says Family Choice Award 2018. I honestly don't understand how this is a family. Uh, I don't understand how that it got this game got that award because this game is broken, okay? This game is broken, all right? Let me explain why it's broken. So let's fix that up a little bit. So there could be a chance in this game where you have a hand of five cards so let me, let me do that. Let's say I have, where's that Amazon card I had earlier? So let's say I have this out on the field, right? And then let's say um, I have this here, okay? These are my two plants out in my field, right? Let's say this is my hand. Or, you know, um, yeah, let's say this is my hand here. These, these five red cards, okay? Well, I can't, I can't do anything. These are plants. I can't plant the plants because I already have two plants in my fields here. I have no greens. I have no yellows. Okay, so what can I do? Well, I could, I could maybe trade with the market, but none of the cards here would work for this equation. Yes, this is yellow. So, okay, so this would actually work. This would actually not work. Why is that? Because this is... Oh, well, this would actually work because it is a three. So let's say this wasn't here. Let's say this was here instead. Okay. Well, these are abundance. They're not starvation for one thing. So I can't place this card on here because it's not a starvation plant. It's an abundance plant. So there is nothing here that will go with these cards. So exchanging cards with the market doesn't help me. Sure, I could do it, but it's not going to help me do anything here anyway. So what can I do? There's nothing I can do. There is literally nothing you can do. You don't, there's no, there's no mitigation for this problem. The, I talked to the publisher, at least on Messenger, or not Messenger, I emailed them and I got an email back from them, Killer Snails, and yes, they confirmed that there's nothing you can do about this. They know about it, they just don't really care. They didn't, they didn't change that in the rule book. They didn't take the time to make a new rule book online that uh, gives you a special action that you can do that would fix that problem. They said, they told me that you can just house rule it to change it. So they gave me a suggestion. They say, if you don't have the cards that you can do anything with here, so if there's nothing I can do on my turn, I could discard all of these cards and draw five more, okay? But what if the five you draw still can't do anything for you? It doesn't fix the problem, you know? What do you do? Just keep drawing until you finally get something that you can do? I played this, and I spent five turns unable to do anything while the other player was getting points every single turn because they could just keep doing stuff. And for some reason, I couldn't do a thing. That This game is broken. It, uh, there might be a time when you play the game, and that won't happen. But the chance of that happening is going is to be like half the time and there's no official rule that fixes that problem. So that's why I say the game is broken. Sure, you can house rule it so you can fix the problem. But it doesn't really fix the problem if you have to house rule a game just to get the game to work for you, just to make the game playable, right? So that's why I'm giving this game, I'm giving this game a four because I just don't think it's that good of a game. The game, and that's not the only reason why, okay? 
These, these cards are not good quality. I feel like I'm touching sandpaper almost. They make me want to get sleeves for this game. But why should I get sleeves for this game if I don't even want to play it with other people because I don't think they're going to like it? I don't think I don't recommend this game. I don't think anyone's going to like this. This game was meant to be an educational game. Teach you the web of life. How things work. Herbivores eat plants. You know, predators eat herbivores. That's kind of what the game is trying to teach you. But there's lots of educational games out there that actually are fun to play. Like Cardline Animals. Love that game. This game... Not fun at all. Can't recommend this game at all. So that's that's what I have to say about this game. I'm giving this game a four. It's just not worth playing in my eyes. And it's I don't understand how it's a family game. If if you it it it, it, it just I don't understand how this is a family game. It shouldn't appeal to any families because no kid is gonna sit here and spend five turns doing nothing while the other kid can can, can 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 score points. It just it's just not worth it. It's 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 just not gonna be. It's just not a good game. It's gonna destroy friendships. <laughs> playing this game, it's not a it's not a good family game at all. So I don't know who it's for because honestly, honestly, it's just not fun. So I'm giving this game a four. Uh, thank you guys for watching my how to play, and I hope you understand how to play this game. And <laughs> like I said, this is a game that you can skip. <laughs> So it's not a game you have to have. Um, well, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.